Okay, well, this is super fabulous because I'm here with Rachel Barber and we were just talking, does Rachel need more air in her hair? And I feel, <laughs> I feel like Rachel's so lucky. And we're going to talk about, in this interview, we're going to talk with Rachel Barber about how she took something really, which was potentially really crippling, which is losing your job, as many people have, or they're being that they're being faced with maybe having taken from them during these uncertain times how you can actually take control back I call it one of my paintings step into your flower how can you step into your power and and create something really good about this so this is just another part of the Cassandra Gaysford show where I share inspiring stories of what I call passionpreneurs people who are pursuing their passion their passion for whatever that is and stepping into their entrepreneurial journey. So today I'm super inspired to talk with Rachel. I'll let you tell um, everyone, Rachel, a little bit about yourself and your recent career change. So, you know, what you were, what happened, what was the catalyst for change and what are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a human. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, quite a loaded thing, but I'm, I'm happy, happy to start. Um, yeah, so my name is Rachel Barber. I am currently now um, an artist, a uh, painter, um, which is amazing to say um, because a year and a half ago, I wasn't. I was actually, um, I was working as a florist um, in Auckland, so the big city. And um, yeah, pretty much when COVID hit, um, the wedding and events industry just got just annihilated overnight really it's just gone even now um like a year and a half later they're still not recovered um so it's a real shame to see all of my Auckland friends and people in business who are running small businesses florists and stuff still struggling with um mm -hmm. with the effects like the just the reality of COVID really mm -hmm. so like when it first hit I actually, um, well, I lost all my work overnight and I had um, about eight weeks, I think that lockdown was. Um, yeah, and I just started painting every day, went back to my original passion. Um, it really wasn't meant to be like a, a flip career change. It was just something I had to do to, to cope and to, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It was a really stressful time. Mm -hmm. um, I was really anxious that first that first lockdown um mm. yeah so I just I just looked at painting I started putting all my work on Instagram um and from there it was it's been a really gradual process just friends started liking my work they started hyping me and then they their friends started liking it and <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just been a, a natural progression but but yeah I mean I definitely had to a start doing the work like you know um and then be have enough sort of um confidence and um resilience to put your work online start to expose yourself you know when you, when you're really unsure you I was at a stage where I was just so confused and I had no idea what the future would look like or if it would pan out or um if I was going to be successful and and what even that word meant or looked like um and when you're in a state like that yeah it's something else to actually just mm. go for it yeah and just put your work out there like without judgment in a way like yeah yeah you're, you're risking it all and I just recently if anyone's listening a lot of you relate to that a lot of people's careers did get yanked away it's like one minute you're on the flowery carpet it's all nice and beautiful and lovely flowery and then someone yanks your flowery carpet away and you've got nothing just bare floorboards and you know, yeah. that, that's super stressful. And I was watching um, the Aretha Franklin movie that's just been released. I forget what it's called. And someone once told her, they said, music will save you. And she was going through a really dark time in her life and she had a lot of trauma and stuff. And she kept coming back to that, my music will save me. I was told my music will save me. And what I'm kind of hearing you say is that you just like, oh my God, I've, I've, I've got to save myself. And you poured yourself into your your just for yourself is that right just for yeah at the start definitely it was it was the only thing I I could turn to um 
especially like I think it was quite pivotal when when that all happened I actually had to move out of my flat had to move out of my home on the same wow. day wow. so I had to put all of my staff put them in the back of my tiny little car and my friend who was also really anxious she me and her decided to isolate together so we went to her quite lucky we went to her her beach house and um in Omaha and um I had nothing with me had no art supplies and um she was busy doing her work on her laptop every day so I was literally faced with literally nothing else um mm. like nothing to for, for comfort or anything mm. so all I did was just I just grabbed a pen from her bench and started drawing and, and painting and I was painting on bits of cardboard like anything that I could find I had no art supplies um I, I ordered some art supplies online and they took like another two weeks to arrive so yeah um, yeah it was just it was just like I was really stripped back to nothing I really felt like I had mm. I had nothing I had no home like I had I was moving I had to go move back with my parents who lived uh they live in far north so I live in Monganui now but um you know that wasn't something I wanted to do either at the time um so it really was a state of um, like a blank slate uh, mm. and to sort of, um, I think it, it is quite a lot about um, building yourself up. Like you say, you've, you, no one else is, wants this dream to evolve except me actually. So yeah. Yeah, I like that. And, and it's really important for people to know, like you said, the first lockdown was really stressful. Mm -hmm. um, and now you're in lockdown again so for those who don't know and some people are listening from overseas and they're kind of watching what's what is going on in New Zealand people are asking me and so you know one 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 night we're merrily merrily going down the stream and the next boom you guys are in lockdown you're about 40 minutes away from where I live but we're not in lockdown you're in lockdown and you don't really get much news so you're currently in lockdown right so how does it feel now that you're in lockdown doing what you're doing versus before yeah well sort of now um this is almost um my natural state anyway um <laughs> I, i'm quite a, a homey sort of person that I, i've come to realize um so i'm i'm continuing on i'm painting i've got commissions lined up and i'm just trying to work through them um so yeah the the, the one thing I was grateful for was the, the day of the lockdown, I actually went uh, on a road trip to Whangarei and got a whole lot of art supplies. So <laughs> I'm not, I had no idea that we would go into lockdown, but uh, that's also something like I, I felt in the morning, like, yeah, I better not procrastinate on this and just go and get some stuff. Mm. And uh, that was a real, um, I don't know, kind of like an eye-opening moment, like this lockdown, I feel really prepared. I've got everything I need. Yeah. Um, even if I didn't, you know, it's it doesn't feel as stressful for me this time at all. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm wondering, I see a lot of people, it's kind of we've got to evolve because this, who knows, now that the power is there to lock people down at any moment, yeah. um, and we won't get into the reasons for that. It's just the fact that people can be locked into their homes for whatever reason legally and it's unlawful to free range yeah. <laughs> more people are becoming aware like I had to cancel a couple of in-person workshops because it would be unlawful for those people to come to my 10 acre property even though they're double vaccinated etc anyway so I, ha I have to you know I think people have to work with them many people say that creation comes from limitation from having like you you sounds like you had you didn't have any materials so your creation came from what can I use um, cardboard pencil blah 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 and now it's come from the limitation of what you now say is your natural state of being at home <laughs> which it looks like you're embracing and you you've come back to your essence which is um, your art and yeah. you're realizing you are a homebody but you're so connected with the world so we're going to get into that when we talk about how you kind of made this this is all around you know um shape-shifting really and we do that at, you know we, we like plants we we do need to shape-shift and shed our skin sometimes and we have to be like the knee cow the giant knee cow and everything falls away usually some wind of change comes to the knee cow and maybe innately it's meant to do this anyway so Let's um, let's talk about just so people know at what. Um, so you actually, 
you know, what do you call, what is your business now and what are you called and why did you start your business? Yeah, well, um, like I said, I, I didn't have an intention to start a business per se, but I thought I'm going to start an Instagram over lockdown and actually to create the name was stressful for me. I was, I was coming up with all these different, like, oh, what could I be called? And I sort of had an insecurity about my name for some weird reason. Oh, like yeah. Rachel Barber, is there something wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think it was like maybe a past trauma from school when people used to, you know, talk about like barbering and oh. I don't know, it, was, <laughs> it seems so weird that that, that was like, Oh, I better not use that. Oh, wow, um, interesting. And you went for it. I just, I in the end, it was it was the least least stressful of the other options. Um, yeah, I think I wrote about twenty different names down, and I wanted them to be all mysterious or cool or something. But oh, I just went Rachel Barber artist, and um, it's just stuck. And actually, the more I have um gone into my art journey, the more I feel like I've almost evolved or embodied that name now, and it's like. Yeah, I'm yeah. a Barber artist, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I really yeah. love that. Because, who was it I was listening to? It wasn't Giorgio Armani, but it was one of those great titans of um, uh, um, fashion. And at the end of the video, he achieved so much. And at the end of the video, he said, someone said, so what is it you do? And he said, I'm an artist. And he goes, God, that felt good. I've never said that in my whole career. So <laughs> he had like a 50-year career and he had never said, I am an artist. It was amazing, amazing to me. And I love the fact that, yeah, you're stepping into your flower, your yeah. name. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's super cool. It's interesting <laughs> to hear that it was stressful. And, and like some people have said to me, oh, you're the woman that paints like a child. It can be stressful if you've been teased or picked on or until you go, yeah, I am Rachel Barber. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And yeah, no. I do have curly hair and you're just jealous. <laughs> no, you're just like owning, you're owning yourself. And I love that. And that and that builds natural confidence. So you uh, set up your own business, right? How how long ago was that? Uh, well, it would have been. I guess you could call that the start of my business when 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 COVID hit and I had to sort of I, I, I was sort of thinking I was unemployed but really that was the start of my business <laughs> um yeah so probably about a year and a half ago mm -hmm. um and then it was uh it was actually kind of interesting like um I think a lot of friends saw my potential before I did because mm -hmm. um when I was ready to sort of set up my business and do a website I reached out to a friend and she said, I've already made your website for you. Here's your password. <laughs> you just need to upload your product. So she's waiting for me to just be ready. And I think that is um, also quite key, actually, because, um, again, it's, we, I think as artists, we're so critical and, you know, um, we're sort of, when is the right time? We're always so obsessed about right and wrong and, and mm. you know, when is a good time? And mm. um, I guess naturally, you'll get there and um yeah it was really that was a really special time for me actually when I realized how um yeah just I don't know how much other people may be connected with my work already before I had or something yeah yeah I think that's the thing around showing up and that very often um, people see the light in you before you see it yourself why which is why it's so important I often say to clients and anyone listening you know just look at maybe a feedback and encouragement that you're getting nice because many people say well I just um the woman that exhibited here with her her beautiful um, sculptural garden art. She said, I just thought my friends were just being nice. And then when someone rocked up and bought her art and a complete stranger, she was like, oh, maybe they are quite nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we all need like um, what we call, I think Julia Cameron calls from the artist's way, like a mirror, someone who can mirror for us what maybe we don't see or we're not fully stepped into that vision yet and so to have lovely friends who that's a lovely story and yeah 
Okay, because I'm not sure. Sometimes people never get that extra bit and maybe they never actually take that step. There's many people, you've heard the quote, no doubt, that some people go to their graves with their music still inside. They yeah. they have, um, I helped a man start a business called Significant Lives and he was a pastor and he would go to people's funerals and he would also hear about the lives they hadn't led that they wished they would lead one day when, as you said, the timing is right. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have um, cheerleaders out there. And I think if we can all show up and be a light for others, we can just keep, which yeah. is part of the reason for this for this interview to, to help people realize, oh yeah, maybe you can make a living from your art. So we're going to sort of dive a bit um, deeper into that. And why, so you're 28 years young, or is that when you started? When I started. So I'm almost 30 now. So. Ooh, serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> so you're sharing with me the reason you decided what you want to do everything all your floral work overnight overnight went so sad the whole probably heaps of weddings went oh, all sorts of yeah. joy went overnight right it's yes. kind of felt like the Taliban came to town <laughs> and the whole um, events industry got hit hugely hard and you didn't think it would return and it sounds like you know really in many ways it, it hasn't returned has it not really um not you yet. know not yet <laughs> No, because everything, the, the goalposts keep changing. Uh, pick, you know, areas keep getting locked in and, and Auckland can't go anywhere. And mm. so, you know, if, the, if you've got guests, if you want to have a wedding down south, but you've got guests coming from different mm. parts of the countries, it, it's still really um, quite, um, uh, it's just not back to where it was at all. And um, I don't know really how that will look actually in the future. So, yeah, I just really feel for that, that whole industry actually mm. yeah mm. and as you as, as I, I'm hearing from you too you just had a like an intuition or a gut feel or something you didn't you said I didn't hold out much hope that it would return and so you focus and rerouted back to your passion mm. and your first love which I love that because it's all about passion painting so yeah. how did you find an idea because you can paint anything right how did you find an idea that would be successful Ah, yeah. Um, I didn't hone in on a certain idea, actually. Um, that I think it's just natural progression. And it's really weird what sort of um, captured people's attention um, as well. Like, um, for example, um, if I had chosen, I would have chosen to do um, my, my passion is really sort of like feminine bodies and, um, you know, sort of painting more kind of abstract but um quite out there sort of um feminine figures you but started that, that way I think started you? that way definitely because that was that was really where my passion was yeah um, and through that I I randomly got a couple of commissions for just really basic abstract not basic but just abstracty kind of do you um, call that basic behind you is that a basic abstract is that what you mean by basic <laughs> <laughs> that's just a basic abstract that's, <laughs> <actually finished. laughs> that's so interesting that's a, everyone look at the basic abstract it's really beautiful <laughs> that's just basic everyone who's watching yeah, yeah anyone could do it <laughs> <laughs> so you've got these commissions for these basic <laughs> Yeah, someone just said, oh, could you just do like some sort of basic abstract? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, yeah, I could do that, surely. Um, and actually, that's the thing that's sort of taken off um, on Instagram out of my work, which is I didn't predict that at all. I didn't I didn't go in there thinking, oh, people are going to love this. Um, it's sort of like a natural style that that's always was a side hustle. And now mm. it's that's that sort of mm. pop more on my Instagram. So I'm now mm. focusing quite a lot on um on abstract and just different um elements and shapes and stuff I don't have any formal training so I've got no idea where you're meant to put stuff or what Ooh, color you to <laughs> no rules right no rules, there's no rules so I mean I, I really don't have like advice around that but I mean if something for me like feels like feels good to go there like with this abstract stuff it feels more like I would be pushing something uphill just because 
just because you know um uh, figure drawing is like my passion um it's not aligned at the moment so I'm mm. focusing on like the stuff that is coming really easy um I love that actually let's talk a little bit more about what's coming easy because I've had people come to my learn to paint abstract classes and a woman came along and she created this really beautiful landscape and mm -hmm. she, she said that's just the ground and that's just the base coat because I'm going to put some more on top and I said wow it's really beautiful she said no but this doesn't count this just was really easy <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, but it's beautiful. No, it's just, it, it didn't take, and I said, the sensitivity that mm. you've shown, the contrast, the light, the, you know, all the dimensions that make a good painting, the, the verticals, the horizontals, the tonal variation. I said, it's just there. And she's really, you know, but that just took me five minutes. And I was thinking of some of the great abstract expressionists who did some really great flow paintings like Helen Frankenthaler, and they would take a very short time. So let's talk about it just comes easy. Tell me more about that. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, um, it is to do with, you know, um, perhaps a non attachment to the final outcome, like I've got no idea what they're gonna look like. And, um, Therefore, like, how can it be wrong in a way? Like, it is so, it's so easy to go there because if it, if I, if I don't like it, I'll just paint over it. Um, so really, I feel like there's this, this thing that holds artists back, and it's actually your, your mind or your perception of of what you are trying so desperately to create. I think mm. so. Um, mm. in a way, like, I'm not sure why it feels easy. I, I don't know. Um, no. I can't I can't logically understand that. No, um, because it's an emotional thing is what I'm hearing you say is that it, it felt really lovely to go there. And what I'm the word that's coming up for me are that these are freedom paintings. That you're a freedom painter, you're what I call um a discovery painter, as in like authors have like plotters and everything's meticulously planned, and they know exactly that James Bond is going to die. And then right. there are <laughs> then there are <laughs> There are other writers, they don't know if James Bond's going to die. They don't want to know. They want to know maybe someone's going to come in at the last minute um, and, and, it, and they're so excited about what might happen. And there's no right or wrong. It's just what's right for the particular personality. So what I'm hearing from you is you're a discovery painter and, and it's all around feeling good and freedom and, yeah. and permission to like make a mark and then you can just go over it, right? Yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, totally. And that's something that um, oh, it seems to be coming up a lot in, in my, my reality is these people seem to be um, connecting with me saying like, oh, I'm, I like painting, but I'm not good. I'm not any good. And it's like, oh, I actually feel like I, maybe there's something inside me actually that wants to perhaps go there with, with certain people or create some sort of I'm not sure. Um, yeah. yeah. Help, help people get freedom and give up on that kind of I'm not any good and yeah. just just be playful. And I think that's probably why, you know, why we've connected is just be playful and um, make mistakes. And I, a friend showed me a lovely video of her three-year-old child yesterday who was playing with a new pot of paint. And I was like, that's me. And she's got the little pink like you, bright colours, and she's got this paintbrush, and then she's got this sponge, and she's dabbing it, and she's going, wee, wee. <laughs> That's so cool. I love that. <laughs> and I feel that's, you know, you talk about, I think your Instagram talks about happy paintings. Is that how you you describe yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, happy, joyful, vibrant, vibrant. Yeah, um, yeah. 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 <laughs> and they're really, everyone watching, you know, they're basic abstracts. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Come and learn how to do a basic abstract. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the one behind you. Yeah, so that was actually, um, it did not look like this um, a week ago. I It was kind of all lilac and I was trying to, um, I had it hanging up down at a local, um, uh, just a local business uh, for about six months and it hadn't really moved so I thought I'm going to take that and bring it back and now it's completely changed it's actually hung up the other way it used to be a landscape um, and now it's gone portrait 
um and it's still not finished it's kind of like I've just chucked a whole lot of layers on there um there's a lot of like uh spray paint there's some ink there's some acrylics house paint so it's really just a mishmash and I'll just see how it ends up <laughs> Yeah, and many people watching would probably go, I love it, don't touch a thing. Um, so, you know, but the main thing is you're exploring and you're trying different techniques. And I, I guess this is why creativity is such a powerful tool for people during these uncertain times, because I'm sure you like me and the people that have come to my workshops, it's just, it's kind of like very meditative. You, you just, the worst, the biggest decision people are making in my workshop is how to make the right orange. <laughs> <laughs> or what color they should put there they're not worrying about for a little period of time they're not worrying that's about the stuff that's creating fear and anxiety um, oh, yeah. and you know it feels like that's what you're doing in your art but you're also sharing it and having the courage to show your art not knowing if it will meet an audience or not but just knowing you had to show up was that kind of scary at first <laughs> Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Um, and a lot of the time, I, I feel like I took lots of breaks off it as well. I was like, oh, I'm not going to post anything. I just don't feel like it. And um, But I guess that's the, there's always something pulling me back there to show up. And um, yeah, it, I don't know, my natural, my my first love, I can't, I can't leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I'm a big fan of passion because it's an obsession. Yes. You know, so and I, and I actually think it's a very healthy many people talk about the image and many people may not know listening may not have found that passion yet but it sounds like you discovered it as you went through because you're kind of forced out of something and it was just innate within you and that you keep um, playing and discovering and changing stuff yeah. and you know passion is an energy from our soul it um, gives people you talked about resilience it gives mm -hmm. people it's it's a beautiful obsession if you know you're using it in a way that that's beautiful to you you know some obsessions can be dangerous but I know um who was the artist he was um who was the guy who was Hannibal Lecter oh I don't know I don't even know <laughs> oh people listening will know you know he's a really Anthony Hopkins so he was a really great um actor but he was a terrible drinker terrible alcoholic Mm -hmm. and he didn't he needed an outlet for his emotions for the like a lot of crazy feelings he was having and um what he did was he started to throw paint down like you said he used the word chuck just chuck some paint down <laughs> so he started to chuck some paint down and so he swapped uh, an addiction for alcohol along with being in recovery for an obsession with color and painting and Love. now he exhibits he said I never thought I would be painter I never thought I would exhibit my art but it just came through him um, because it was it was a healing um, for himself so I kind of feel um, that's that's what's happened for you and when you show up with your beautiful paintings people are feeling that vibration and they're drawn to it would you agree oh absolutely yeah even people so, sort of ask like is there an underlying meaning to your work and I'm like actually no it's just an intention to have fun and vibrancy and yeah. that comes through naturally yeah yeah I think that'll be I'll write that down an intention to have um fun and what did you say vibrancy vibrancy yeah I don't know just or um I don't know a, a lightness and yeah. yeah I like that just the simplicity of an intention to have fun and I think that's beautiful because a lot of people aren't feeling a lot of fun right now so that's cool you set an intention I was talking to someone today about being rebellious and it's like having an intention to have fun despite the fact that you could go a different way <laughs> you could, oh you know, totally <laughs> you could plop into fear but you you set an intention to have fun and mm. people want fun fun and love is a very magnetic vibration so um you started posting everything in lockdown, every sketch, every drawing you were sharing, and people encouraged you. And then people started to ask you to, oh, could you just do an, an abstract thing? And you started to do your <laughs> basic abstracts <laughs> because you were just having fun. You started yeah. having fun. Um, and then you started to, you said you, brown, you, you branded yourself as a commission artist on Instagram. So tell us a little bit about that decision. You branded yeah. 
Yeah, well, that's a really recent decision, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I was sort of, um, I knew that Instagram was, um, was connecting me with a lot of followers and people that wanted to, um, well, they connected with my work. But I was really aware that my Instagram perhaps was a bit confusing. Um, and because I have got these two streams, I've got my my bodies and then I've got my abstracts and it, it is yeah. kind of confusing. And yeah. so then I thought, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna take some businessy kind of advice, which is um I did this course through Creative Northland. Yeah. Uh, Shout yeah. out to Creative Northland yes. for helping artists during this time. Yes, thank you guys. That was awesome because it it, it did make me think about you know clarity and goals things like that and I started following this girl on Instagram who does Instagram hacks and she said um think about what what um people connect with and then like niche down on it and just just really like the the um what's the word just she's just, just said just hone in on on one detail and just really try and um sort of push that so it's an experiment kind of thing it's only been recently I've said I'm a commission artist and since I've put it in basic terms like that, it's it's like people are coming at me going, oh, I, I didn't know you're a commission artist. I thought, you know, this was just a page to showcase your work or something. But um, no, I'm a commission artist. And um, <laughs> say it one more time. I'm a commission artist, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I do basic abstracts. <laughs> basic abstracts. <laughs> basic fun abstracts yeah. what are the colors you want for your house or your home and we'll get rid of the basic and we'll say dynamic fun and fluid abstracts we'll oh. remove that basic from, oh, from the that. vocab today it's that. gone in the new moon energy basic is gone fun and fabulous <laughs> abstracts um so if anyone's looking for a fun and fabulous abstract Yes. Not the basic abstract, energetic. but a fun and fabulous abstract. I'll, yes. I'll put the notes, I'll put all the details in the show notes below, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> basic is gone. Yep, no more basic. No, it's, it's super energetic and dynamic and fun and crazy yeah. and vibrant and psycho. <laughs> psycho. Yeah, yeah, I love that. It's kind of, which is what um, some of Anthony Hopkins' work is, is doing. And people love it. They just love the energy of it. Mm, yeah because it's free of um kind of the straight jacket it's free of the constraint which people are finding so sad yeah so you're yeah. like psychedelic you're like a flower child of the 60s you're like hey everyone get high on my paintings and, it, and no hangover <laughs> pretty much yeah <laughs> someone described my work as is like are you like a real hippie artist or something <laughs> I was like, I don't know, but that, I feel like that's a compliment. <laughs> it is a compliment. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that was the way back in the 60s, if you look at all that, people were free and full of love and flowers in their hair and beautiful music <laughs> and less hate. You've got, and, yeah. you've got a beautiful flower in your hair today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People used to call me pot plant when I lived in Wellington because everyone dressed in black and I always had these flowery dresses. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get called pot plant. That. <laughs> it's amazing. That's inspiring. I want to be called pot plant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm really honoured. I think go forth and put more flowers in your hair. <laughs> thank you so and, I, and also we'll get on to you're also creating really cool clothes with um your painting with your artwork as well so we'll get on to your you sort of merchandise you've sort of expanded which is really awesome in a short period of time and it all comes from your love um so yeah so you were just saying that people just started saying well, what are people connecting with and you need to push down on that or you need to amplify that and you started to do that and then you put it out there I do commissions because it's really um, interesting, Rachel, a lot of artists hate commission work and, they'll, and they're quite vocal about it. They hate doing commission. I actually love, I love doing, because you know that it's going to a certain person in a certain space and you can customise it within your technique and style um, to what they want, if they want more. Is that what you do? If they want a bit more yeah. orange, you'll put oh, more. Yeah. I, I really encourage people to like I want to have this collaboration thing going yeah, on, dancing. yeah. you know I, I do send photos like part done yeah even that is you know quite exposing for an artist um because I feel like 
you know, uh, we've got this sort of, we know it's not quite done and, yeah. you know, we can get a little bit precious about that. Yeah. But um, I do, I do encourage like people to jump in and just say, oh, I want more blue. And yeah. great. Yeah. I want a purple blue. It's not an offense to me at all. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what that is. It's just something that sort of. You want um, them to be happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, yes. <laughs> I just yeah, that's that's it. I'm I'm not. I don't need to be like right or have my way. Like if I wanted to do that, I could do my own personal projects. Um, yeah. and I do, and I still do that. Um, when I when I really feel like I've got something I personally want to channel. Yeah. But um, yeah, I love. That's why I love commissions. It's just something yeah. playful, and you're playing with them. You're giving them yeah something, um, that they've sort of, um you know they want Cherish. <laughs> they love, yeah because I worked on a big commission up here and I think you saw on my Instagram that big kind of always summer commission and yeah. knowing what color they wanted and then they'd come in and have a look and they go oh there's a drip I don't want any drips and right <laughs> gone the drip's gone yeah. <laughs> I love drips sometimes and so it's gone and then they go oh I'd love a little bit more of that color and you know it's really lovely it's, I think it's a beautiful process but not if you're I, it probably suits certain personality types more than others to be collaborative and I do um, agree yeah yeah but it is fun when as you say you just want them to be happy and, and to know that it, they, they love it and that's made them happy during these dark often dark seemingly dark times to have a bit of joy on their walls that's really what you're doing isn't it yeah just got a message from someone on Instagram the other day saying um well they've booked in a commission and um and they just said, oh, my gosh, this is the most exciting thing that's happened to me all year. <laughs> you know, I love the work. And I, I just, you know, that actually really hit me kind of because um, there really is a lot of darkness, you know, for, for people. And um, I'm surrounded by, by color and that daily. And um, just to be able to have a platform to provide even just mm. daily Instagram little shots, snapshots mm. to people, mm. I don't realize how much you know it's actually needed at the moment yeah mm. and because I, I, I had someone just recently it was yesterday actually I was in town and I had four people approach me and say thank you so much for because I'm sure sometimes I don't know if you feel like that when we're in the same Facebook um, not Facebook but in the creative Northland group the other week and you know sharing how I got told in one of the mentoring to show up like Coca-Cola you know like pop up everywhere and sometimes I think oh is it like too much um, <laughs> and people came up to me and said thank you so much for all those lovely vibrant pictures you've been sharing and I'm trying to share other business people and this is part of the reason here and other people that are being a light in humanity and, and sharing joy not all this stuff we're getting stuffed with fear and anger and hot and hurt <laughs> and and people come out and one person came up to me a dentist and shook my hand and said you're the artist <laughs> it's like it was so nice you know so but yeah it's a good feeling and um I often share with people the movement Dr Dr Joe Dispenza so people I'll put a note below that he started when COVID first hit so as you said you felt fear and anxiety many people still swimming in fear and anxiety which is really bad for the immune system really bad for your health and your cortisol levels really bad for your relationships um it's just bad to be um battered with fear all the time and so he created instead of being anti what everyone's doing but the way they're talking to us he created this movement called go love 20 so instead of COVID-19 oh yeah okay. it is go <laughs> love 20 and he's a neuroscientist so he, you know he's a brain scientist he's rock drink credentialed he was in the movie what the bleep do we know which was like a quantum spiritual kind of a movie um really interesting you may not have seen it but but the fact is what he's saying is show up for love keep showing up for love because love is the highest vibration love um love is so healing for humanity and that's what people are connecting to because because people don't want to live in fear they want to live in love and that's what you're doing in these beautiful vibrant um and that's why artists are the healers at this time the dalai lama said we don't need more lawyers what we need is more artists <laughs> <laughs> 
more artists, storytellers, you know, dancers. Um, we need more of these people, which is why it's really great to see Creative Northland really supporting um, the arts. It's really, you know, unheard of in my lifetime prior to have such, you know, um, resources at our doorstep. So that was cool. And they've obviously helped you kind of refine your brand and get into the commission artist brand. One thing I wanted to do is to sort of... Um, talking about art and running your own business a lot of people are fearful that they'll it'll be a 24 7 thing that they'll burn out fry out that they're always on the uh, always hustling is a word I hear a lot yeah. um is it hard work running your business being the creator and the marketer and the businesswoman um as well as all your other roles in your life you know how do you keep your energy levels and is it hard work I mean uh, again, I guess it's a perception thing. There's some people that are always going to look for a reason um, why it's so hard. And it does take a lot of my time. Like I would say, um, you know, there's not really separation between my life and me as an artist. It's everything. Um, it is 24 seven, but it's, it's it's okay actually um <laughs> it's not this awful thing that I'm going to a job for eight hours a day and you know and it doesn't stop after eight hours it does go on all the mm. time constantly mm. and mm. I am really grateful for that actually I I wouldn't have it another way mm. so um yeah maybe I have a, a different outlook on that but um I love it yeah, I, I've even forgotten the rest of your question. I'm just thinking how much I really love it. <laughs> well, I mean, I know Daniel Steele, who's a prolific author. She just, she loves it so much. She, she apparently she exists on two hours sleep. Like she's a phenomenon with just two facts. She doesn't need as much. But going back to what I said about love, when you love what you do, Mm -hmm. um you know people say it's not it isn't like going to a job where you're just sort of soul sucking it's giving you energy but I but I also ask how do you keep your energy levels high and I know you're going on a silent retreat or something do you wanna... I was but it has been cancelled because <laughs> oh, of yeah because of lockdown <laughs> <laughs> but I do go uh pro probably you know um almost every time it's on it's about half an hour from my house but um so yeah about oh, I've probably been to about 10 this year <laughs> just quiet time just quiet time that really helps me to rest like one of my core um values or needs or, or something like that is a lot of rest like I don't push myself to always just be on the grind and like going 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 like I know I say I do this 24 7 but like I'm not like at it like this 24 7 it's like I understand that like I, I rest a lot I lay down a lot I listen to music a lot you know I light some you know I light some incense and I just make some tea and um, I have a coffee and I go for a beach walk and all of that stuff just it is feeding into my creativity but mm. it's definitely um it's a like allowing coming from a place where I was always like on the grind go 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 in Auckland mm. to mm. being here one and a half years later where I'm not I used to feel really guilty about that, about resting. Um, but it's so important for my creativity and especially like creatives. Like, I don't know about you, but my brain is like always like crazy. Yeah. Um, and my dreams, like, I, I mean, I'm awake in my dreams essentially because they're just so crazy vivid. And um, yeah, it's, it's like that rest and that time to come back. Meditation really helps yeah. for me. Yeah. So that's something I, I actually prioritize and like I actually look forward to. I book out time slots. I'm like, no one talked to me for two days. I love silence. Yeah. And at the same time, I can have moments where I'm just like cranking my music up and just like, you know, yeah. just like crazy. So it's, yeah, I think it's about like uh, just flowing with what's what you need at that present time. And it does take a while to even understand your own process. It's taken yeah. a, I would say a year and a half or I would say a year I'd say the last six months that have been a lot easier to sort of lean into that process like the internal process of what 
what I need asking myself. Because you're, you're developing new rituals, so no doubt as a florist, you had certain rituals and you had certain structure and certain rhythms and certain routines, and now you're a free-ranging, self-employed woman, <laughs> you know, an artist who's now creating her, her new rituals, and they're different rituals, just like possibly what you wear to work it is different from your life so it's quite a different thing but what I'm hearing is it's really important for you to um, let go of the guilt around rest to recognize it's important part of your creative process and mm -hmm. to lie down to go for beach walks to get out of the air to get out of the studio to meditate to prioritize some quiet time to know sometimes you you, you know bounce it up with the loud music but it is important to come into some some people call it a spiritual practice, a meditative practice, and going back to the resilience, and that's something you know, I share with many of my clients, is meditation is the, what we call the soul. Adriana Huffington, who founded the Huffington Post, she said, you know, it's like the Swiss Army knife of healing to, to learn to meditate just even for 20 minutes a day. Um, ideally a bit more and more during highly stressful times as people saying we're coming into a highly is it going to be a big climatic something happening with all that's happening um, we're seeing a lot more movements a lot more resistance so there's a lot more kind of high intensity energy and that's when people need to up their well-being practices so yeah and finding the one that's right for you so that that's really interesting to hear you say so um do you need much startup capital? That's the other thing people worried about. Oh gosh, if I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to have to get my studio. I'm going to have to have my website up. I'm going to have to have all my artwork. I'm going to blah, 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 blah. You know, did it cost yes. you much to start up? Um, not really. Like, not really at all. Um, yeah. because it was already like a, a passion of mine. Like, I think I, you know, I talked to you a little bit about this, but. I've already got some some paints and some I had some canvases that were like old canvases that I painted over and I already had basic supplies so it's not like I just came up with this idea like I'm going to be an artist and I need to go and buy all these things it was like no I've got I've got most of the stuff and um you know I didn't need yeah. I didn't need all of the stuff like I had um even my my living situation like wasn't ideal um I when I first moved up here um I didn't have a studio um there was like a shed that we were going to reconvert to a little studio so that was kind of in the process um but yeah it's sort of it, we already there wasn't really like um a huge amount of capital going out or, yeah no nah. I think that's the nice thing for anyone listening who's a lot of people are looking now for various reasons how can I I'm even going to be pushed from my job I'm going to be made to leave for some reason um, or I just hate it, it sucks. And then they're fearful, I don't have any capital behind me. And it's really interesting now more and more that less and less you, you don't really need a lot of capital for many startup businesses now. You just need the willingness just to you know start with what you've got and improve from there and experiment. And as you've done, you rebranded your Instagram page and... Um, you re so you can just shape shift all the time, but you don't have to spend a fortune and risk it all, and then have fear that oh my god, am I going to make any money? Because it, it was just coming up, showing up for the joy of it at first, and then it's kind of gone from there. And then you can reinvest, can't you? As you go, oh, and as yeah. you need, and you're connecting with people all over the world. And I know we just started an art gallery here, and it was just from the old cow shed. It wasn't even finished. I just showed up and can't get things finished with all these COVID lockdowns so you know you just use what you've got and we had the shed and we just it was like a shit shed for a long time but it's <laughs> quite good now and <laughs> a shit shed <laughs> so so as yeah. we kind of end today's inspiring conversation what is the secret to success and particularly you know managing cash flow you haven't got a, a, um, a salary check coming in every week and you know what is the secret to to having some security during these times as an entrepreneur oh that's artist? such a kind of like oh i feel like really like the secret is Oh, I don't even really know like I want to say just let go of all your expectations but it doesn't really help people but I mean I don't know it's a deeply intuitive thing like I just 
I just I don't know I just kind of had trust that it would it would work out it sounds really la-di-da but no no a lot of the great spiritual teachers are saying we need um, radical trust at, during these times and you put your foot what I'm hearing you saying you might not see it in yourself and I'm sure people who are listening will see you know you you showed up you had the courage to show up you went with love and I think that's a really important thing you keep showing up then you refined because people started saying well, why don't you so you took advice you started to think well I love my body um, paintings but these are the ones people want to buy so you but it was still love you still love your um, fun and fabulous and free abstracts but you decided you weren't going to push something that perhaps you know wasn't going to be um, like Coca-Cola maybe it was more banter for people so you went <laughs> you went with the, totally. the you know the effervescent bubbles would that be right you know you just kind of this is what people wanted and you did more of it just hearing you sort of summarize up what we've been talking about even puts it into perspective. I think like the main key to success is, is openness, mm -hmm. that openness to be able to adapt to flow. I know a lot of, um, a lot of people, you know, think about the young generation as being like so flippant, like they'll just change their mind all the time. And they think about it as a negative thing, but I actually think it's actually amazing if, if, if more people stayed open to mm -hmm. um, the joy of life and, and, they just really let things happen instead of like trying to like figure out secrets and how to do it and uh, 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 uh. you know there's I just feel like the mind sometimes is our as our our best and worst enemy in a way and I feel yeah. like yeah that's yeah. really what has has been the pivotal thing for me like there's there's no one thing it's just it's just that state of um allowing yeah, that's a brilliant <laughs> summation of my summation. <laughs> that's what collaboration does. Um, and I love that what you basically said, stay open to the joy of love. Yeah. And that is a fantastic um, place to, to leave um, today's chat because, yeah, it is around uh, going back to Dr. Joe Dispenza and the vibration of love and the power of love and the joy of love and creating love and sending it out into the world, what I call love or Mother Teresa said, we're all pens in the hands of a writing God sending love letters to the world. I think it's a beautiful quote, you know, we might adapt that we're all kind of paintbrushes in the, in the hands of a painting God <laughs> sending our love babies, our joy bubbles, our joy paintings out into the world. And um, yeah, so that's a great summation for everyone. And people listening may not, uh, painting or colour may not be their joy or their love, but somewhere within their hearts, there'll be something that they're obsessive, obsessively compelled to do that they can't not do whether it's looking at butterflies or I knew someone who just uh, he was the manager of a prison and he loved baking cupcakes awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I know a, a guy he was a researcher and he researched potatoes so wow. you know there are things that I think follow the calling of your heart and what just fascinates you or you're obsessed by and then show up and share that because you'll find someone that's obsessed he, he's you know, this cupcake guy, he's, you know, he has these little <laughs> bake, bake off things that he does. And it may not be your full time gig, but it may just give you the, the, enough joy in your tank to get through these um, toxic times, really. Um, yeah. So I think that's, that's really what, what um, I'll repeat it again from Rachel Barber stay open to the joy of love. Oh, it's so lovely. So <laughs> any, any last word to anyone listening who needs a bit of encouragement to show up for love? Um, stay open and just go there, please. We all need to feel it more. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.